Hi, I'm Willie. Welcome to my channel. Thank you for being here. I appreciate each and every one of you. And I was uh, actually working on, yes, I do sometimes still use uh, pen and paper, especially if I'm sitting on the couch having a drink. But I was working on a resiliency plan for a, a pretty complex network. And I was also jotting down notes for my book and my class that I'm going to be releasing about how to properly design and deploy and manage networks. And I thought, you know what, I've got a few things written down here and I wanted to give you five of the top things that I think that you can do. Um, and some of these are going to go, well, duh. So I'm calling these like the top five common sense things that you can do for your network, or really you can adapt this to network servers or whatever, but I jotted them down with some notes. So let's go through these. So the number one thing that you should do to improve your security posture, whether it's your network or servers or whatever devices, change your default logins immediately. So a lot of devices are still shipping <coughs> with manufacturer's defaults. As soon as you have those defaults, make sure you change the username, use a strong password, and if available, use multi-factor authentication. That's the first thing you should do. The next thing that you should do is on any router, server, switch, access point, disable unused services and ports and really kind of tighten it down because what that's going to do is it is going to, it's going to make your attack surface smaller, right? How many, you know, router firewalls do you log into and UPnP is enabled and it's automatically opening ports for devices through the firewall? Don't do that if you're, if you're about controlling your network and making it as secure as you can. And, you know, disable things like Telnet. I don't even know why Telnet is even still allowed. Disable Telnet if there's HTTP for management. Make sure you're using HTTPS for management. Even disable SSH, SNMP, U, UPnP, all those things you don't need, disable them. Now, if remote access is needed into the network or into the device for that, make sure you're using firewall rules to lock it down to the source IP that needs to connect to that device or service. Number three, always keep your firmware updated. And if you followed like QNAP, use QNAP, you know, a lot of the issues there is they have updated their security software because they found problems. I'm not saying that's all of it, but you have administrators who are not keeping their firmware up to date and these things are exposed to the internet. So whatever it is, whether it's a server, whether it's a device such as a router, switch, firewall, a phone system, make sure you are keeping your firmware up to date. And if you've got the heebie-jeebies about being the first person over the hill with firmware updates, put it on your list that you know you need to update the firmware, but go out to a forum, go out to you know places where people are talking about this and see what's happening with those firmware updates. If there's some sort of a non-starter or some sort of an unexpected glitch, you'll see it there. But make sure you have a plan to keep your firmware up to date. This next one, is one that I really can't talk about enough. And that is use VLANs on networks and use the proper size <clears throat> subnet mask instead of using huge flat networks. You, know, you log into a network and you see a subnet mask of 255.255.0.0. If they don't need that, that's a problem. You can't really easily provide security between devices there. Everything's kind of wide open. It's the wild, wild west. Whether you're putting static IPs in what you consider ranges, it's still the same network. So there's no firewall besides on the host device itself that's stopping any of that traffic. So you're going to want to make sure you have a voice over IP VLAN, an IoT VLAN, a printer VLAN, and that you, that you make those VLANs <coughs> as small as you can, planning with some growth, right? So if I've got two printers, I'm not gonna use a 255, 255, 2550, which gives me 254 usable IPs. I'm probably gonna use a 255, 255, 255, 248, right? Because that gives me what five usable IPs, it's a slash 29. So I'll have my two and I've got three for growth. And then it's easier when I'm looking in logs or DHCP servers or whatever it is to see if something else is using those IPs that I don't know about. Then I can also easily use firewall rules or access control list to stop any shenanigans between those VLANs. So make sure you're not using huge flat networks. Everything has a VLAN, everything has a purpose. It's small, it's controlled, 
and we're using firewall rules appropriately. And the last one is make sure you are securing your management interfaces, whether it's on printers, whether it's on firewalls, switches, access points, routers, servers. Make sure that you are restricting access to those management interfaces um, to either specific VLANs like or specific IPs. Let's say you have a jump box in your network. So a jump box is a fancy word for a box that has access to more than just a user that's VPNing in, right? So we might VPN in, hit the you know RDP into the jump box, and then we have access to more of the network. So make sure you're restricting access to the management interface as appropriate. And then also when you are handing out your administrator access, only give people the access that they need. So you can use role-based administration. Somebody may not need to be a super admin on your Unify controller. Somebody may not need to be a super admin on your phone system. So use the concept of least privilege. Give people the amount of, of privilege or rights that they need to do their job and no more. So that, that concludes my, my first five kind of common sense tips for securing your network and your devices. If you've got questions about this, you can ask them down below. Otherwise, give this video a thumbs up. Please subscribe, comment, and share. Follow me on Twitter and TikTok. Those links are down below, along with affiliate links, a Patreon link. And if you need IT consulting to address anything we talked about in this video or those voice over IP, networking, security, storage, all those things, head on over to willyhow.com, fill out the contact form that's on the front page, and someone will be in touch with you as soon as possible. You can come discuss this and other tech-related items at community.willyhow.com. Once again, I'm Willie. I want to thank you for being here, and as always, I'll see you in the next video.